Hey, YouTube. Well, I figured out a way to have to look at the little background I got. <laughs> he looked, oh, he's so sweet. I'm here to talk about Queen Sugar. Queen Sugar, episode uh, season three, episode six. Okay, so this one opens up with Nova's in the bed, right? She's woken up by a phone call. Phone call is from Vi. Aunt Vi is having a hard time down at her, where she makes her pies at the church. Uh, her helpers are unavailable. So she tells uh, Nova to rush over there. Now, Vi is just, just short of a mother to Nova. So she does what Nova said. I mean, she does what Vi says. Nova does. She doesn't want to... She wants to get working on her book, but Vi says, don't, this is an emergency. Get your ass over here. She goes over there, and they have a lot of girl talk. And at some point, uh, Nova decides to record because she's decided she's going to write about the people there at St. Joe, which would include her family, right? <clears throat> and uh, Vi is cool with it. Telling her stories about, you know, the way things were, about how they came up and all this kind of stuff. But the one thing, she has one stipulation. She does not want uh, her medical condition to appear in the book. Don't talk about this lupus. Uh, Nova says uh, you should put it in. It's, it's an interesting story. But Vi is calling that and she says no. Okay. Okay. Charlie is ang angry and hurt over Davis's betrayal. Now this is an old betrayal. This kid is thirteen years old. So I guess when she found out when he got in that scandal, is the first he, she heard that he was a womanizer. So he was hiding it pretty good for thirteen years. Uh, so she's very hurt over that. She's in a bad mood most of this uh, whole episode. I say the whole episode. Uh, we see her sitting at the kitchen. She's on the internet and she's seeing the story he's broken about this baby he had out of wedlock. Of course, Michael's going to have to deal with it also because he, his, his uncle, I mean, this father of his is famous. And so he's getting, they don't, they don't show us a lot of teasing, but he's feeling that way. He's feeling like everyone's judging him and his family. Right? Uh, <clears throat> Darla finds out. Darla goes to pick Blue up at school. And one, one of the teachers approaches her and tells her that Blue has been misbehaving. He's been acting out. And the latest incident, he has actually pushed some kid off of a swing. So I guess pretty dangerous. What happened to my child? Sweeney! He's supposed to be on my emotional uh, uh, reinforcement there. <laughs> okay. So... Darla, now Darla's pissed off because she didn't had no idea that he was acting out. She didn't know about his bed wedding and she didn't know about his acting out. Now I told you guys, let's do a little commentary here. I told you guys from the beginning, if this thing ends up in court, the mother 99% of the time gets the child. Particularly when the child was born of her womb. What leg does uh, 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 Ralph Angel have to stand on? Nothing. He's not even... The biological father. So he's better be nice. Because if that woman decides to take him away, she, isn't that he can do about it? So we'll get a little bit more into that because basically I'll just, uh, basically Blue wants to go live with his mother. His mother's got this nice house. she got her a rental house. I don't know what Tall is doing for a living. She's in a class. She, she was a, she, she, I think she was a bookkeeper before before she found drugs and all that. But you know, I'm team Darla all the way. So it's because I'm, I've recovered from drugs myself. I know she's struggling to get back, earning her respect, it comes slowly, but she is doing what she's supposed to do. And with her, with all of the people, basically the whole town, I mean, buying them won't even speak to her. Charlie, the whole family have turned their back on her and that girl has stayed strong. She has not relapsed. She's moved back and got her own place, got into school. And eventually, I'm guessing, she's going to want that boy living with her. And the, the boy should be living with his mother. Uh, Ralph, he's got this farm, and he works uh, all the time. So it may be coming, we may be coming a time. He, he'll always be his father, 
But there may be coming a time when this kid moves out. All right. When Blue sees Darla's new place, he's uh, you're excited about it. He wants to move in there with her. So they're <clears throat> a little bit further down in the uh, A little further along, they have another conversation and she, where she asked Blue why he did this to this kid in school, why he pushed him off the swing. He could have hurt this kid. And it comes out slowly from Blue. But apparently the kid had set, said his mother left him because his mother no longer loved him. And he got pushed off the swing. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Charlie. Mm -hmm. Charlie stumbles on these people doing survey of, of this land. This land that that Mr. Prosper used to own, I think. But anyway, this was a survey of all this Landry land. Landry's own all the land. Most, mo Almost all, everybody is renting from them, leasing from them, and farming the land, except for Ralph Angel. Their land is, is theirs. She sees him surveying. So she goes and asks the guy, she's trying to get information. What are they doing? She said, the story was that there was something wrong with the land. And he said, no, we're here for something else. So she asked for his business card. So now they don't reveal to us what the, what the card said because a business card basically tells you what the person's business is. So just by getting a card, she, she, she would probably know. We have to guess here. I'm guessing either this land has got oil on it or some developer it wants to build a shopping center or a neighborhood or some developer is interested in it. Something's going on with this land, right? But it's not revealed yet. Okay. Uh, Remy, all through this episode, Remy, we don't see Remy, but all we see is him calling and texting Nova. And she is uh, perplexed, shall we say. So far, she has told nobody that her and this Remy are moving closer to seeing each other. Did they kiss it last week? I don't remember. I think they kissed. Anyway, he's pursuing her, and she is resisting. She's resisting by not answering the calls. At least we don't see her asking, answering the calls, right? That's going to be a big mess. Uh, Nova and Charlie are already not speaking because of, of uh, Nova's reaction to Charlie selling the meal to the laundries, right? So there's a scene in here where Ch Charlie kind of snaps at Nova because she's going really going through about this about this thing with Davis. This is sending her in some, right? So I don't know if she was holding out hope for Davis or not, but uh, she still had all his uh, memorabilia around the house, the magazine covers he's done and all those kind of things, and that's going to climax in this episode. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Ralph Angel's off this date. I, I got to figure out what this aging girl's name is. You know, he got such a heavy accent. I don't know what her name is, but the Asian girl he's been interested in, they go out on an official date and they talk about everything. And they, you know, he, she tells her whole story about her family. He tells his whole story. And he thinks he's going to surprise her by saying that he had been in prison. But she already has knowledge of this because on her on his she's already checked him out in uh, on his paperwork, right? Remember she's doing all the books and everything. She says I already know. I don't know why, why it'd be well. I guess for some people it would be a big deal with the prison, but uh, she already knows she's still down with it. And now they get their kiss, their first kiss. <laughs> that Ralph, how did she go have to wear the all? She gonna have to have the whole armor of God dealing with this old sour puss. But for the moment, maybe that'll work better for him. Somebody from a different culture is totally different. Maybe she, uh, she can work with him. I don't know. So they're seeing each other officially now. Micah and his friends, they're out here on this land, which they're not supposed to be on this land. I guess, you know, these farm people, people have a house and they have two miles down the road, they steal their property kind of thing. 
So they found these places where all these old shacks, I guess where people, kids go and hang out. <clears throat> There's some graffiti on the on the barn side. They're hanging out there. Here come these two racist kids, bastards. <clears throat> yeah, tr- oh, my throat is terrible today. They uh, encounter these. It's about is it five of them, these kids that Michael's been hanging out with. Well, it's two white kids drive up on the land. I don't think the land belongs to them. It's not there in their family land. It's just where they go to hang out. They say this is where our spot is. At some point, they called the black girl a bitch, and uh, a black bitch, in fact. And uh, Micah goes to defend her honor. He knocks their little flag off their car. They got a Confederate flag on their Jeep, or whatever, and they take off. I thought something was going to happen this time because <laughs> these all teenagers. But they run like cowards. Soon after, right after they pull off. This, other, this guy who owns the land pulls in and tells them to get off my land. I call the cops. Which we already know there's a problem with the cops in these southern places. You know, God bless you guys who stay in the south. I just, I just don't. It's almost like going back in history. I mean, I guess prejudice is still rampant all over the United States. But it's totally different in the south than it is in the cities. Northern cities. So they stay. I mean, obviously they have lands, they have businesses, they have interests, reasons that they stay, but uh, many people stay in the South. So God bless y'all. And y'all got to have a strong back. All right. Vi goes to dinner. Vi is a hypocrite. Y'all remember uh, the last season when Vi had a fit because Hollywood had brought a white person into the house? He had brought one of his co-workers into his house just to have a beer or whatever, kick and watch a game. She went off. I don't want him in my house. All this whole shit, right? Which is the first time, the first thing I didn't like about Miss Vi. I said, oh, she's got flaws. Like the rest of us, we all got we all got something, baby. Anyway, so she, they told her it's being very prejudiced. So I guess she makes a distinction here. Because she is going to dinner with this man who put her pies in, the, in his store. She's going to dinner at their house. She doesn't seem uncomfortable in their house. Maybe it goes one way. I can go to your house, but you can't come to mine. Or if it's business, or some reason you got to be there. I don't know how, how, how our mind works. But she goes to dinner at this man's house. The man has always been sweet to her. But you know, whenever you're dealing with these dramas like this, you always got to be a little suspicious. This, uh, uh, this man offers her a business opportunity. He wants to put his her pies in all the stores. Now I don't know if it means all the stores that he personally is owns a, or owns a part of, or because I, I got the impression that he owned the stores that she put her pies in initially. He said in all the stores. So I don't know if she meant just in supermarkets in general. She sees he sees her pies there. He makes her an offer. I want to expand the business. You and I are partners. You the primary partners. It's your business. I just want to invest in it. I love your pies so much. Have been eating them morning, noon, and night. The wife concurs. He loves those pies. Okay, so this is Vi's big opportunity. So my, to my amazement, usually they always say, oh, I have to think about it and all that. No, Vi says, yes, let's do it. <laughs> this is her chance. What is Vi, about 50? I think Vi's about 50 years old. And this is her big opportunity to, to, have, to fulfill her dreams. Now, you might say, how can a pie be a dream? The dream is to own her own business, to be independent. They've hinted at that desire in her since the first episode, right? When those women came from out of town, they were all doing well, and she was still working at the high yellow. That seed was planted even then. So now her dreams are coming true. This man has made this offer to partner with her. I'm just hoping that this doesn't turn out to be, because the wife seems a little strange, almost like a step for a wife kind of thing. It's like I hope they're not up to something. I hope this man, this man, this white guy from this uh, market is sincere and not going to take advantage of her. Because they move into where they're, they're distributing to all the supermarkets and things. She could have a, quite a bit of business on her hands. So she's getting ready to expand. And I'm hoping she don't get burnt. Because now she, you know, you, you're taking your business and just partnering with somebody else. You're giving someone else half of your business. That's the way it's done. But it could be for good or for evil. Uh, okay. Uh, 
So I asked the question in my notes. Will she be ripped off? We'll see. Is this a laundry and sheep's closing? <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> okay, next thing we see is Darla. Darla rolls up, taking Blue back to the house, right? She gets back to the house, and there's Negroes. <laughs> Young bucks all up in the kitchen, right? This is in Ralph's house. It's drinking beers, playing cards, playing spades, cursing, and just having a good old time. Darla goes off. She runs them out of, out of <laughs> her house. I, I, I suppose it is different when you have children. Children, you're raising children, you don't want to uh, be a hangout. So this guy who uh, Ralph let move in last week, he let him move in, and he's invited all his friends for a, a card game. Dollar rolls up on it, and she runs him out the house. Uh, Ralph Angel is somehow in the house. I guess he's not aware of this game. Either he's not aware of it or he don't care. But the, the guy, uh, the guy who's been staying with him says, we were just playing cards, man. And maybe they were innocent, but he shouldn't have brought all the people into the house. When you're raising it, when you have a cow in the house, it's different than if you're a single person. Put it like that. And uh, when Ralph comes up on the scene, he tells the man, you got to go. You got to go. Now, look here. I'm going to make one comment about Ralph Angel. You know, y'all know he's not my favorite. But Ralph... I know actors when they're playing their roles and things, they're never they're never supposed to look directly into the camera. We know that, right? Unless that's part of the script, they never look into the camera. But Ralph, he always has a, that kind of a distant where he's he's staring off, and it seems too deliberate to me. His, his eyes, uh, uh, that might be in, in his acting. He seems he's a good actor. I mean, I'm not saying he's not a bad actor or anything, but it's some distinct about the way he looks. Uh, the way he looks off, it seems too intense to me. But just an observation, just an opinion. That's purely an opinion. Uh, all right. At the end of this whole scene, after these people have all left, and he's and and Ralph has told this guy he's got to leave as well. Now tonight, <clears throat> so I guess this guy is homeless again. I don't know how, that seems kind of harsh to say you got to go now, you know, knowing he ain't got nowhere to go. It ain't like the guy was doing something to try to burn the house down or anything like that. But uh, she announces that she wants uh, half, half custody of, of the kid. Half. She wants to split the time in half. She wants to be in her, in her son's life. She feels like she can help her son. Darla is coming back, Ooh, and her hair is so gorgeous. Is, is that her real hair? Her hair is just beautiful. She looks gorgeous, and she's doing well. She hasn't relapsed. Out of all the drama she's had, all the rejection she's had, she's becoming stronger and stronger and more and more confident. At some point, my guess, she's going to feel so confident that she's going to want her child living with her. In this episode, they've already showed us that that has already been expressed. Blue has already picked out his room. And he wants to be with his mother. Right. Okay. One of the last things. <clears throat> okay, Charlie has herself a little bonfire. <laughs> she has. They didn't show her moving into this house, but this house is gorgeous. She lived in this beautiful house, huh? Right? In, mo uh, in San Francisco, it would be considered a mansion. Big, beautiful house. It's got this backyard where it's got a fire pit. So she's sitting at her fire pit, this grand fire pit, and she's burning all of all of Davis's memorabilia. You know, she helped build his career. She was his manager as well. Not only his wife, but his manager as well. But she took all his stuff, all of his uh, magazine covers that he's been in, puts them in this uh, fire, and we see her sitting up there having her glass of wine, enjoying this fire burning, right? And Micah walks up on her. There's no no dialogue. He sits down and they watch the, the pictures burn together. The man's a womanizer, you know, and she found out about it late. Late. So now she's finding out what she was married to. And that is where they ended. Okay, see, it I made 20 minutes. That's, that ain't too bad. I like to go 15. 
All right, bless y'all. Uh, see you next week. Let me click off.